great. Okay. Uh, I'll call to order the Green Mountain Care Board's hearing of November 6, 2024. Uh, we have one substantive agenda item, which is a request to amend condition B of the fiscal year 25 hospital budget orders, and there is a potential vote noticed. Um, first, we have meeting minutes from October 30th, and I move to approve those minutes. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Hi, and the minutes are approved. And I'll turn to Ms. Barrett for the executive director's report. Thank you, Chair Foster. I wanted to let folks know that we have two new uh, public comment periods. Uh, one is on the FY25 Medicare only ACO budget reviews. There are multiple of those, there are three of them, um, and materials and um, information on how you can public comment is on our website. Also, we have an open public comment for One Care Vermont FY25 uh, budget. So again, the Medicare only ACO budget and then the One Care uh, budget separate public comment periods. And we are accepting public comment uh, still on Act 167 community engagement work, as well as a next potential model with CMMI, uh, the AHEAD model. And with that, I will turn it back to you, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you. Uh, I'll turn to Mr. Hengstler, our uh, counsel, um, to walk us through the request to amend Condition B. Hey, thanks. Um, I think what I'll do is give kind of a high level what we're looking at today and why. I, I do have a couple of slides that are designed really just to refresh everybody's memory on um, the uh, benchmarking and guidance and the language in the budget orders for this year. But brief history, the board issued orders on October 1st, establishing hospital budgets. The orders included uniform language in condition B of each order, capping the hospital's overall change in charge and its commercial negotiated rate at the same figure. I'll, I'll get in a little bit more to detail at that when I pull up a PowerPoint presentation in a moment. The hospitals that are here today, which are um, Mount Escutney, NMC, Springfield, and SVMC, came to the board explaining that for, I think more than one potential reason, they, uh, the language in condition B was causing issues with contracting with commercial payers. The board certainly uh, you know, wanted to hear more and understand the issue because um, this was uh, very similar language to what the board did last year. So hospitals gave the board some some responses to to what the exact issue was for each hospital regarding condition B. Blue Cross also gave the board some information since the purported issue here regards contracting with commercial payers and and um, Blue Cross appears to be the you know a, a one where where there is some consistent uh, disagreement. Um, so what I'm going to do today is just briefly walk the board and public through the background of how we got to the budget order language. And then what I'd propose is we turn it over and give the brief window of time to address anything high level they'd like to address to the board. There's, um, we have an uh, attorney for the hospitals here, so it, that that maybe most expediently could could come through um, through her, but but you know, open there and then give time for the board to ask any questions. We are noticed for a potential vote today. So with that, I'm just gonna pull up a very brief slide. Okay, so starting point, I just wanna remind everybody the language that we used last year in the budget order, because as I said earlier, there's no 
substantive change in language from FY24 to FY25. But there are other changes that did happen in FY25 that I understand are, are more the reason that there's been some confusion and, and these requests to amend from the hospitals. I'm just using NMC as an example throughout this for the sake of transparency, not to pinpoint anything about NMC, just needed to pick a hospital that uh, that I could just follow through with language for the purpose of consistency. So what you see here in condition B of the FY24 hospital budget order is language that the hospital's overall change in charge and commercial rate increases are approved and not more than X percent over current approved levels. So that was the language in FY24. I'll pull up language in a little bit from FY25, but it's basically the same. So that's what the board did last year. Um, the budget orders were established last year on October 1st. Then for guidance process this year for FY25, the board established benchmarks. And one of those benchmarks in guidance was a benchmark establishing a commercial rate growth benchmark. So again, the budget order language from last year spoke to a cap on change in charge and uh, commercial rate. This year, there was a benchmark, benchmark two, that stated that commercial rate growth by payer uh, shall be no more than the PCE price index plus 1% as of January 2024 over FY24 approved budget, which amounted to 3.4% for FY25. So the commercial rate growth cap in guidance here was the, the benchmark that the board set, and that was, again, a cap on commercial rate. With the guidance document, staff also had hospitals fill out a template called the rate decomposition sheet. This decomposition sheet was designed to, I'll do my best here as the attorney and not the finance or, or data person. Um, the rate decomposition sheet was designed to isolate a hospital's commercial rate ask in a uniform way so that staff could see both the hospital's rate requests and the assumptions that the hospitals were all making to reach those requests. So this is pulled from the FY25 guidance document and states that the rate decomp sheet collects NPR due to rate, charges less discounts, versus net patient revenue due to non-rate changes, such as utilization, payer mix, case mix, um, et cetera. And um, that's that's all that's really relevant here. I just wanted to give you a description of, of the rate decomp sheet at, at a high level. The decomp sheet, I'm, I'm going to get a little bit into the weeds with the decomp sheet for a minute, just so we all can, can see how the, the math worked on this. The decomp sheet had um, many columns that sought various points of information from hospitals regarding their budget assumptions. I made this as big as I could, and it still might not be big enough to really read it particularly well. But I've, I've highlighted the three that are relevant to the, the rate request, the, the rates that hospitals were requesting in the decomp sheet. So these were the commercial rate requests from the hospitals. Um, th those rate requests are in the bottom highlighted item, which is labeled FY25 commercial rate NPR impact. Um, this is the estimated commercial price growth the hospital is requesting as measured by impact on NPR. And the way that number was achieved on the sheet was by taking the second highlighted item and dividing by the first highlighted item. So just to walk this through, the first highlighted item is the hospital's budgeted NPR for FY24. The second highlighted item is the difference of um, FY25 NPR from FY24 budgeted NPR that can be attributed to changes in commercial price. I'm going to show you another slide on this to like actually show you numbers attached to this. So we're talking conceptually. But the idea was that um, the staff took the, the price, the amount of NPR attributed to a price increase from the hospital for FY25 divided by the FY24 budget. And that got us the estimated commercial price growth which is the, the rate increase. And if we take a look at, this is like an abridged decomp sheet, so I pulled a lot of columns out, and again, kind of small,
but this is again just using NMC as a consistent example across the board. Um, what you can see is that in the case of NMC, commercial FY24 budgeted NPR was about 76 million. You can see that in the first column. Um, if you go over to the next highlighted item under the header NPR FY25 due to commercial price, this 4.8 million is the amount of NPR increase that um, NMC was requesting due to price increase. And then the 4.8 million divided by the 76 million equaled this next item, which is the 6.4%. And that 6.4% was the commercial rate request that staff used. Um, so this was an, an FY24 to FY25 rate calculation. So that's the DCOM sheet. I just wanted to give that, that overview again. And then last, I'm just going to turn to the budget language for this year. So how did this all shake out in, in language? This is the language that hospitals are explaining is, is causing, you know, they're saying unintended consequences. The language used this year was basically identical to the language used last year. Hospitals overall change in charge and commercial negotiated rate increase are approved at not more than X percent over current approved levels. Um, staff and board uh, chose to add this word negotiated rate instead of rate just to really try to clarify um, the dip that there was a difference between change in charge and, and commercial negotiated rate or commercial rate. But an end result is that it was the same practice of, of capping both charge and rate at the same percentage. So that's the that's the overview. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull down this slide. And uh, Chair Foster, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. But um, uh, again, opportunity for for hospitals to provide anything high level would be would be fine in my book before the board gets into questions. Um, sure, thank you for the overview. Um, is, so um, I'm sorry, who's is Ms. Hart? Are you representing the hospitals? Are you speaking for all of the hospitals at issue today? Yes, just briefly, Chair Foster. Great. Great, please go ahead. Thank you. Great, thank you. So I want to start by thanking uh, Chair Foster, members of the board, and Attorney Hengsler for providing this opportunity for these four hospitals. Uh, I know it's been busy for the last two months in particular, and so we appreciate the dialogue. Um, that there is an openness to what the hospitals are raising today. I also recognize there is more of an interest in hearing from the individual hospitals than hear me talk. I'm going to speak briefly and then I'll mute myself so that you can pose the questions. So we appreciate that Blue Cross of Vermont wants to weigh in on this issue, but I think in their two submissions, it's only rendered the waters murkier. Mm -hmm. I just want to give a few examples or a couple examples. They point to the fact that the issue existed last year, as Attorney Hengstler just referenced. Um, similar, the same language, no objections. Um, and then they also argued that hospitals were able to reach or exceed, in some instances, the NPR. But they're mistaken in that there's a fundamental difference between last year and this year, and that even though the language is nearly identical or identical in condition B, the board used change in charge for the cap or target for both the change in charge and commercial net rate increase without the word net last year um, for fiscal year 24. This year, the board used the negotiated commercial net increase. So they used the lower number. So there's a very real impact in, the, in that the different, a different lower percentage was chosen of the two this year. And, and that creates the issue. So the four hospitals um, previously provided several examples of this in their October 29th response to Blue Cross of Vermont's first submission to the board dated October 28th. Um, this effort and including other efforts by hospitals that are not formally part of this proceeding, have um, this was going on before deliberations even, verbal and written comments over the past several months to bring this to the board and board staff to signal that there were anticipated hurdles that um, some hospitals were hoping to have clarified with that the language at issue. So what I want to refer the board to is um, Blue Cross has said that the rate there is a 
the rate is an issue, the definition of rate, but but I don't think there is there is no issue about how we define that for hospital budget hearings. It's clear. And so if we look at the hospital budget review guide, and I'll just this is excerpted language, excerpted language. The change in charges is the increase or decrease in the average gross charge, BFFS sticker price for all services for all payers. The board regulates the increase in gross charges, sticker price, or the commercial net negotiated instead of net charges, which are gross charges minus the negotiated deductions by payers and hospitals. Because negotiated prices are considered confidential and this information is not available to the board. So we have an understanding of what the increased rate is. That So it's a red herring to say that we should be redefining what the rate is, um, the argument by Blue Cross Vermont. So we believe that the fix is relatively easy. Um, we're not asking for, and, and I think you can see that in the two suggested motions on slides 10 and 11, in particular slide 11 of today's materials that were posted. So again, we appreciate the willingness to have this dialogue today. I'm going to mute myself and let the board ask the hospitals the questions. Thank you. Um, thank you. Uh, I guess I'll open it up if any hospitals want to make any comments. And then what I'll do is I'll hear from Blue Cross if they have anything that they would like to share. And after that, I'll open it to the board to ask any questions of any of the uh, folks that they'd like to. Um, so probably best to use the raise the hand. Uh, Ms. Pitts? Can you hear me all right? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much for um, letting me have the opportunity. We've been having a lot of discussion around changes in rates. I, I'd like to bring it back a step and just talk a bit about um, while, yes, we're talking a lot of percentages, what we're really trying to get at in how we built our budget is the net cash that we're trying to bring in through the door. So Mount of Scutney had asked for basically a three and a half cent increase on our gross charges. For every dollar that we bill, a 3.5 cent increase, which for our commercial payers would net us 2.2 cents in additional cash in the door. So in our minds is that you know the whole confusion over how much is the actual increase sort of semantics and what well it isn't it isn't but so that 2.2 cents additional is how we built our budget and um and so when we got our order back from the green mountain care board the comment was that the rate increases seemed reasonable again the 3.5 cents that we were asking for which would net us 2.2 but that it was our our volumes that you felt were too high. We can we can deal with that. But now what Vermont Blue Cross is are, is saying is that we can really only increase our gross charges by 2.2 cents, which is really only going to net us 1.4 cent in cash. So we won't be able to make our budget under that. We will have to cut things and to cut volume. I, I, that will even be below what our overall NPR would be if we had to cut our rates by that much. So what, what Mount of Scutney is asking for is to please just reword it so that we can have that three, either 3.5, 3.4, whatever, but something more than the 2.2% or the 2.2 pennies on the dollar that we're asking for. Just um, that carries forward forever. So. That is our ask, um, and I hope you will consider it. So thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, any other thoughts from um, Ms. Harder or any of the hospitals? Okay. Um, is anyone from Blue Cross here? And if so, uh, do you have any information you'd like to share with the board. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. All right, great. So I, I've met some of you, but certainly not all of you on this call. Uh, my name is Greg Bobo. I'm um, Associate General Counsel at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, 
Thank you very much for offering us an opportunity to speak with you this afternoon. We're hoping that we're able to provide a little bit of insight as to um, the concerns that we've already expressed by way of two filings that um, I'm hoping that you're all in possession of. Um, I'll just I'll just do a very high level overview of our position. And to the extent that you have any more technical questions for us, we have a couple of people on the line that are likely more suited to respond to certain questions than, than I might be. Um, but generally speaking, from our perspective, um, we acknowledge, I think, um, given, given the discussion thus far, that there is a, 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 a disagreement or a misunderstanding with respect to the um, the term rate growth, how the term rate growth or change in commercial rate is used throughout the order and even in previous orders. Um, I think it's noteworthy, as uh, Mr. Hengstler pointed out earlier, um, that the order language this year was more or less identical to the order language last year. And historically, there has not been an issue with respect to the definition of uh, change in commercial rate. Um, also, as we noted in our filing, we believe that the simple approach to the definition of this phrase is what the um, year over year change in commercial payments are. It appears that some of the hospitals um, are using a definition for um, commercial rate increase. They're using a definition that's more akin to the commercial payments um, over gross charges which I think we indicated in our filing, um, that sort of definition tends to complicate um, a more common sense approach, um, which we also think is more transparent and easier to use uh, while negotiating. Um, that's sort of a high level overview of our filings and of our position. Again, if you have any specific questions, we're happy to address. Thank you. Um, Ms. Briel. Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you. Um, I'm Stephanie, I'm the CFO at NMC. Um, and, you know, I just want to add into the conversation and then happy to answer any questions, but um, there, there very much has been objections <laughs> to this language, at least by NMC. Um, NMC had big issues with this language last year um, and did a formal appeal. Um, and I had submitted two written comments throughout the budget process before now um, related to this issue as well. So I just wanted to go on the record with that and then happy to answer additional questions. Great, thank you. Any other comments for the board? Uh, Mr. Adcock, oh, and um, people keep reminding me to identify where people are from. Mr. Adcock, I know you're the CEO of Springfield. Um, please go ahead. Hi, Chair Foster. Thank you for allowing us to um, make this request today. We appreciate it. And um, I think that the comments made by the first two hospitals also um, represent similar situation to our circumstance. And I'll defer that to Kata Westcott, our CFO. Um, our Patrick Nudo, who is our consultant, it helps us. But we have we have raised this issue prior to us even presenting our budget presentation at the initial presentation. And in, in that discussion, we were told by staff that that you know there was no concern about what our gross charge, in other words, our charge description master increase, but there was no there was no one cared about that number provided that the yield did not exceed the maximum. And that was the premise that we proceeded with our presentation when we made our initial presentation. Um, so so our comments about how this will affect us are very similar to those of Mount Scutney. And it looks like Patrick is, from our team also um, is going to add into that. So uh, thank you for letting me, as a non-finance person, uh, make a make a comment. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Nudo. Yes, uh, thank you guys for your time. Uh, I wanted to add that uh, it's, it's important to keep in mind that uh, most of the commercial contracts are not paid simply on a percent of charge basis. While it's common that a lot of outpatient services are 
are paid that way from these commercial payers. Uh, it's important to note that a lot of inpatient services are paid on a flat rate or a per diem uh, or a DRG case rate, depending on the, the payer contract. Uh, certain services like labs and radiology are paid on a fee schedule, uh, and those fee schedules may or may not change year to year. Uh, so it's important to note for Springfield Hospital that the 2.2%, uh, as, as Bob mentioned, is a uh, yield from the increase requested of 5.5% on the gross charge master price. Uh, and that the 2.2% is simply a, is the aggregate of all the dozens of contracts for commercial payers and the dozens of different types of services that are provided, uh, which uh, the bottom line net patient revenue impact is calculated at 2.2%. Uh, that was never intended to be the rate increase uh, to be asked for from the commercial payers. It's, it's a result of increasing the charge master 5.5%. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Westcott. Yes, thank you. Um, I just wanted to make uh, one other point as well. Um, Shireen had, um, in her opening statement, had mentioned that um, last year's budget order and this year's budget order for Condition B have the same language, um, but were very different um, last year uh, compared to this year for us. Um, since last year, that number represented, last year that number was 6% for us, and that number in our budget order actually represented our gross charge increase or our charge master increase, so it was not an issue for us last year. However, this year that number um, in the budget order, instead of being our um, charge master increase or change in charge increase that our budget was based on, which was 5.5%, that number in the budget order is the 2.2%. Um, which Patrick had just um, stated is our basically our net revenue impact from commercial payers as a result of the 5.5% uh, charge master increase that our budget was based on. So that's the distinguishing factor between last year and this year is that last year's percentage was for us was change in charge. And now this year in the budget order, it's the basically the net revenue impact. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bubble. Thank you. Um, I just I I I also have um, Blue McLaren on the line from uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield who wanted to make some points. If if you'd be willing to listen to her, of course. Great. Except you uh, you have to Miss McLaren unmute unmute so we can do that. Yeah. Yes. So sorry, I'm Lou McLaren. I'm the Director of Provider Services here at Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Vermont. And I really just want to point out some math that will come into play if the budget order is amended. So if we take the first example around Mount Escutney, the, um, the assertion that they really should have a three and a half percent increase to their gross charges and that it will net out to something lower for us it'll net out if they have the increase as they stated the effect to us as blue cross and blue shield of vermont is over the 2.2 commercial rate increase that's in the order so right off the bat we're going to have to be talking to the hospital about adjustments to the contract to come in under, at or under the guidance or the order that you gave. For Springfield, if the 5.5% increase is approved for their charges and you have a 2.2% commercial rate increase that's been approved, that's a material difference that is gonna require changes to our contract that I don't, I don't believe the hospitals are contemplating. So. If, if the orders are amended, it is still going to affect the hospitals and the revenue that they're receiving from us because all of their requested charge increases are exceeding what your order was for the commercial rate increases. So I think we need to keep that in mind that it's not necessarily, modifying the order isn't necessarily gonna solve the problem. And, and in our mind, we believe that the two numbers can be an agreement and that the hospitals have ways to meet their NPR targets. Um, it can't just be an issue of not wanting 
to have a lower charge master approved. Your order was clear. We do not believe it should be amended. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open up to um, board questions or comment. I have a couple questions and I'll just say this feels to me like it's really a negotiation issue as opposed to a board issue. So the way I read the orders and what I intended in voting for them was that the insurers could certainly negotiate anything below the caps. So if you're saying it's 3.5, but then effectively, you know, it comes out to 2.2, well, the insurer could have said it's zero or one or two. So what happens below the cap and how you negotiate it, to me, that feels like it's a negotiation between the parties, not something for the board to put its um, stamp on. We gave a cap and how you negotiate the discount off charges or where you land after that, I think is really between the insurer and the, and the hospital. Is there any reason I'm misunderstanding the ability of the hospitals and the insurers to negotiate? I get that one side is saying no and one side saying yes, but like, what is it about the board order that prevents that process from happening? Ms. Pitts? Yep. Thank you. And thank you, Chair Foster. Um, and I'm from Mass Gutney, just to <laughs> remind everybody. Um, so yes, I, yes and no. Um, and I think part of this is confusion over maybe how we understood the rate decomposition or the decomposition workbook. As I, as I've listened through to all this, I'm new to this process. As, as, as I've listened through all of this, I think part of the breakdown might have occurred in, as previously mentioned, not everything that we do is paid one for one. If there's fee schedules, things like that. Um, and as I pointed out before, what we're asking for is really that net change in cash. Uh, so, so overall, what we're being told by Vermont Blue Cross when we go to them and say, we are going to increase the charges that were paid as a percent of charge in by three and a half percent. They are saying, no, you can only increase them by 2.2%. And as I pointed out before, three and a half cents of overall gross revenue will really only net us 2.2 cents. And it's that it's that dollar amount that we're trying to get at. So, um, so once they've discounted, we're just not going to collect as much cash. And they use an example, you know, related to um, an employee's paycheck. And if you give somebody a three and a half cent raise, the employee doesn't get it all. Yes, I would argue that is very true. They don't get it all. But that difference goes to the IRS on the employee's behalf. It goes to the state of, New of Vermont on the employee's behalf. It goes to a 401k on the employee's behalf. That differential between what we charge and what we actually get paid doesn't go anywhere. We just write it off. You know, um, and and there are a lot of other things. If an employee, ha if a uh, patient has a high deductible plan, the hospital may not ever see that money. We may end up giving them financial assistance if they apply. Happy to do it. It may go to bad debt. The person may never pay, but you know, it's we'll still see that patient. And you know, I I think it, we're, the hospitals are being painted here as. I hate to say the bad guy, but I don't think we're being unreasonable asking for a gross change in charge versus what it's going to net us for cash. I wasn't here last year, but it was my understanding that yes, this same thing had happened. And that when uh, we went to the insurers and said, well, all right, it's really going to be the 3.5 that it was set that it was granted. There wasn't any argument. And now this year we're being told no. So, you know, I'm new to all of this. It just seems surprising. Every time I've ever worked with a um, with a commercial insurer, they've really just focused on that higher number, knowing that it doesn't net the same cash amount in the door. I wish that healthcare finances were a little simpler. <laughs> Very complex, not the best system in the world, but it's what we have to work with. So really, I know from Mount Scutney, we're just asking if we can just have the number change to be the gross charge increase that we had requested. 
Okay, thank you. I mean, my question is getting at if it's 3.5 and 2.2, isn't the insurance company entirely entitled to say we all only agree to go up to three and one? They are. They are. Okay. They are entitled to do that. And if they work through negotiating with us, they will do that. So what they are telling us is because we're saying 3.5 and they're saying 2.2. I mean, if we have to live within that, you know, I, that's that's why we're here, I guess, is what we're saying. Okay. I get it. it, it okay. Hey, the, yeah. the point I was making is I understood the orders to not be a guarantee, but to be a cap through which you negotiate. And what happens beneath that is between right. the hospitals and the right. insurance companies. Yeah. Um, so two point two is a pretty low floor, I guess, is our is our issue. There's not much negotiating room there. Okay. All right. Um, that's fine. Um, and and uh, all right, uh, Ms. McLaren, did you have anything? Yeah, I just wanted to point out, I mean, um, Ms. Pitts gave the example of 3-5 and 2-2, two, two. and then Chair Foster, you said, well, couldn't couldn't you and the payer say 3-1? And, one? And, and, and that can't happen because the charge master increase that any hospital implements applies across all their payers, Federal, you know, government payers and commercial payers. So we cannot negotiate a different charge master increase. So whatever is approved, and today for Mount Escutney, it's been approved at 2.2, if it's changed in any way, shape, or form, that flows through to all their payers. So the only number we can negotiate on is what is in the order, the commercial negotiated rate increase approved at 2.2. If we do find that you, if you choose to amend the order and Mount Escutney, as the example, is allowed to increase their gross charges by three and a half percent in our book of business with them that comes out to a 3.1 percent increase in spend on our members that exceeds the budget order in condition b so we're back we're back sort of to square one where that's a cap that's a cap for us the maximum additional dollars we would pay so Negotiating something lower would be advantageous to us, but it would exacerbate the problem to the hospital. So by, it, you know, we can't we can't negotiate on charge master. We have one number that we can negotiate on. And today, if the orders are changed, the delta between where we are today and where we will be is even larger that we will continue to negotiate with the hospital on. Right. Okay. Um, I see there's some hands, but I'm going to let the other board members ask questions and then we can get to any comments. Are there any other board member questions? I can jump in if no one else wants to. Um, thank you all for um, coming today and providing your perspectives. Um, so, I guess I want to clarify my understanding. So it, what I thought I was voting on was the number in the rate decomp sheet, which I think is equivalent to the net. I can't remember what it says in the in the order mark, but what I'm going to call the net negotiated commercial rate, not the change in charge. Um, the change in charge, I think, was um, my recollection is that some hospitals came in with a change in charge and some hospitals did not. So um, so I think what I'm trying to just confirm is that is the the number that we included in the order for these four hospitals, I believe is the equivalent of what was in the rate decomp sheet, which was the net commercial rate after the negotiated discounts. I'm not sure if that's a question for Mark. <laughs> I think it might be, um, but I just wanted to confirm that understanding. Yeah, yeah, I, I can speak. I think I can. I think this will answer your question, Robin. So, uh, not every hospital got the rate increase it requested. Um, staff use the rate decomposition sheet as the basis for determining with the board the appropriate commercial cap, commercial rate cap for each hospital. And the rate decomp sheet is, an, as the hospitals filled it out, 
and as it, as its definitions flow, it's an NPR to NPR calculation. So the rate decomp sheet is looking at FY24 NPR, then it's looking at price increase for FY NPR, you know, price increase for FY25, and it's using that to calculate the um, the rate increase. The rate decomposition sheet is not um, is not taking increased commercial price and dividing by original gross charge. So it's not a charge to price increase in that sheet or in the description of the sheet on in guidance, uh, both explain that it's NPR to NPR. Thank you. Any other board member questions? Okay, uh, Ms. Hart. Thank you, Chair. I wanted to go back <clears throat> to the question that was raised where Stephanie, and I'm hoping she'll put her hand back up, and I had our hands raised about, isn't this a ne negotiation? That's exactly right. And the negotiations in the past have been on the charge master or the change in charge. And by automatically setting that number at 2.2 as opposed to 5.5, it's akin to having your toe on the scale. We can't have those negotiations. You're not, you're you're limiting those negotiations from square one. So that's all we're asking for is the leeway to have the negotiations that have always taken place. Great. And, and, I mean, ultimately, this is what it feels like to me is we're deciding whether to guarantee more money and revenue from the insurance company to the hospital or to the insurance company or ratepayers or whoever. Is that right? I don't see it that way, that you're just giving the hospitals the ability to have these negotiations as they've always had. So if you are setting it at 2.2, the, you know, the same number, you're automatically, as I, I, the best thing I can think of is a toe on the scale where there's just this limited ability to have, it, it's between the insurance company, which frankly, I find it, it's surprising the insurance companies have this seat at the table in these discussions, because this really, um, is a negotiation, a private negotiation between these hospitals and insurance companies. And so I don't know how they can be asking, you know, for a different interpretation of what the rate is, et cetera, or how these negotiations, how uh, this was interpreted last year, they're completely mistaken about it. So I'm, I'm troubled about the information that's being conveyed. I understand that it to be a cap, not a thumb on the scale, but a cap. Is there a distinction you're drawing? Uh, what my distinction is, I, I think what we're doing is we're not even letting them get to that charge master number, right? You've got the charge master is, is a higher number, typically, not in all cases. We certainly know of hospitals where that the hospital provided a budget where they were the same number. But in this case, to the extent it's higher, you're just all it's being reduced in some cases by 3%. And so that that isn't about a cap. But I, I'd invite Stephanie, I think her hand was up again if she wanted to provide more clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Briault. Hi, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I really agree with, you know, Shireen. The answer to your question, Chair Foster, is yes. This really is an issue of negotiations between hospitals and commercial payers. And I don't think that you want to insert yourself into that space. Um, and so the ultimate way to not insert yourself into that space, right, is to write our budget orders on, hey, hospital, here's what you can change your price by. Here's what you can change your charge master by. And that's how our budget orders were written for a very, very, very long time, right, up until last year when we made that switch. And so now, you know, here we are. It's creating a new level of confusion. It's creating a new level of insertion of the Green Mountain Care Board into the negotiations between hospitals and commercial payers, which, again, isn't your goal. I don't think that that's what you want. Um, I, you know, really, if your budget order is written on something that is 100% absolute, I can tell you with exact certainty 
what I am going to change a price by on my charge master. But now when we all start to assume what the effective yield of that is going to be, well, it depends. How many hospital services am I going to provide? How many professional fee services am I going to provide? You know, because those things, all of those claims get paid in a different way. And so if I, you know, I, I, you're, you're now writing a budget order on an estimated yield as opposed to something that is black and white and absolute and then letting the, the hospital and the, and the commercial payer negotiate. And so I think you would actually, it would be much more clear, you know, you guys would be out of the process. Um, and so I just couldn't agree with more with Shireen, right? Like this feels like another um, unnecessary and probably not, not intended um, level of actually limiting negotiations. Can I ask Any a other? question on that? Yeah, go ahead, Dave. So I'm trying to understand, when you say a, a yield, do you mean the total amount of dollars that you would expect to bring in this that that over that time period? Yeah, and I think, you know, this hasn't come up yet that, yes, that is what we mean. And this hasn't come up yet. But I think another challenge of the way the budget orders are written is it says, like, for any commercial payer. And so now I'm like, OK, we'll define commercial payer for me. Does this mean like a very small commercial advantage plan where I may only get, you know, a handful of patients walk through the door? And if those handful of patients who walk through the door, maybe they all get hospital based services and they don't get any professional services. Um, and so the reimbursement that I end up getting from the commercial payer, like I, it just sets me up for a little bit of failure to say, OK, if things are reimbursed differently, but I have an overall estimated amount of yield that I'm going to get from this price increase and my budget order is written on that estimated yield, how do I actually manage that on a per commercial payer basis? It's really, really, really tough, right? Because unfortunately, like the billing and reimbursement process is complicated and claims adjudicate in all different ways. So now I have, you know, it's really hard to say that a small commercial payer with very few members coming through my door might not have the same overall mix of services that they're receiving when I look at my commercial payer population as a whole. And so that language is also really problematic. Um, in my opinion, but the answer to your question was yes, and I know I gave you more information than you wanted, so thank you. <laughs> Mr. Del Treco? Oh, sorry, uh, go ahead. Thank, up on that. Sorry. thank uh, you, Chair you're... Foster. And Mike, let me, let me let Dave finish and get a question. Sorry about that. Oh, no, yeah, 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 no worries, sorry. no worries. Sorry, so if you're getting, a, you know, do you renegotiate contracts at all during the year, or do you only negotiate once a year? Um, it it depends, right? Either party is allowed to request a negotiation at any time. Um, so sometimes we do get mid-year requests um, from certain payers, and you know, other payers we really don't. But it's not a yes or no. It's it depends. And if. If your revenue expectations are below what you were expecting from a particular payer because your utilization or do you try to shape that contract mid-year? No. Why would you try to renegotiate a contract mid-year? Um, I've so in my time as CFO, I have not tried to negotiate a commercial payer contract mid-year. I have not. Oh, sorry, sorry, Mike. Thank you for. <laughs> okay, uh, Mr. Del Treco. Thanks, Chair Foster. Um, this is a really interesting and complex conversation. I, I think um, what I would turn to is. Uh, 
our public comment that we made on October 3rd, where we where we point to um, sort of the traditional hospital finance language of there's a hospital gross charge increase. Um, and you heard the complexities of different contracts, different services, different commercial payers, and each one of those terms yield a different amount. I think our challenge um, was born when we entered the terminology of commercial charge. Um, I've I've stated that there's no such thing. We have one charge master. We charge every payer the same amount for the same service. So. If I am a Medicaid patient and I go for and I receive the identical service as a commercial payer, those charges are the same. The yield on that gross charge may be different. Um, and that's that's the that whole cost coverage discussion. I think we need to go back to the traditional language of uh, healthcare financing of raising gross charges at x x amount, and that that's been in your. Uh, the Green Mountain Care Board, and frankly, every regulate, re regulator uh, before you, um, they've they've regulated that that gross charge, and then that allows for the negotiation that I think Lou McLaren and uh, uh, you're, you you mentioned Chair Foster about that negotiation and how does that work? I understand the downward pressure on rate, but then when you co um, collapse that on rate and this artificial, I'll call it, language of commercial charge, because it's not the traditional, um, the way uh, the traditional financing of how hospitals P&Ls works, um, it, it gets really confusing and muddy. So I, I think go moving forward, it should be a gross charge. I think uh, guidance and some of the terms in the, uh, uh, I think the, the, the terminology that you've used in historical documents are right on. I, and I do appreciate the downward pressure. Uh, that's not. I'm not asking for leniency on rate or downward pressure leniency. It's it's when when there's a an amount that's capped at X percent that is part that enters the negotiation, um, whether it was whether intended or unintended. And um, it sounds like, and I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth here, but it sounds like it's unintended. So thank you for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any other comments, healthcare advocate? Anyone else? Oh, sorry. I think I'll go to the Blue Cross folks first, and then the healthcare advocate. Greg, do you want to ask the question, or do you want me to? Go ahead. Will you beat me to it? Yeah. So, Chair Foster, I, I wonder if the Green Mountain Care Board could clarify um, what was intended, because we're hearing the hospitals talk about charge master increases and commercial yield. Um, we need to understand if the commercial rate cap, rate cap sorry, um, that's in the orders in condition B, are you intending it or was the intention that it would be a net yield on gross charges or a year over year change in net charges? So, and it sort of goes to the concerns that Mike has expressed and that we've tried to articulate in what we have filed, the lack of like real clarity around what is meant by the commercial rate cap seems to be at the heart of the matter. We are interpreting it differently. We as payers don't look at things in terms of net yield. We're looking at what are we paying this year? What are we gonna be paying next year? what's the allowed amount or the negotiated rate or the net charge, whatever word you want to use from one year to the next. That's not a yield, that's literally just a percentage increase. So is there clarity that can be offered around what is meant? Thank you. Um, sure, and I appreciate you crystallizing the issue. Uh, <laughs> I'll speak from my own perspective because can only really speak for ourselves here in this context. But no, we, we've never intended a commercial net yield or a commercial guarantee or anything of the sort. It was an intent for a year over year percentage increase. And from my recollection of this process, the concern was that if we do just a charge master, but then there's negotiation of discount off charges, 
it can end up being a, a larger increase to the commercial payer and, and, and your clients than we had intended, which is why this was added, was to ultimately ensure that the rate amount increase that people feel was within our caps. That was the intent that I had and understood. And that's consistent with the budget order language that says it's not a guarantee, it's a negotiation. All right, um, we're about out of time and I think we have a couple other things coming up. Um, so I'll take one more comment and then the and then the healthcare advocate, if they have anything, I'll turn to them. Uh, Mr. Rooney. Thank you, Chair Foster. Uh, Patrick Rooney with the Hospital Association. I just want to hone in on on what Robin was seeking clarification on. So it sounds like Robin, you were approving the commercial negotiated rate, which is the net result of some sort of increase in the gross charges. If that's what you were approving, uh, then I'm wondering how did we get language around the uh, overall change in charge into the budget order language. If you weren't approving anything in that space, then why is it there? Attorney Hengstler, as you went through your, your document, you refer to the rate decomposition sheet, which is trying to, trying to extract exactly what Robin believes she was approving. But there's no mention of overall change in charge in any of these materials. And originally, when deliberations began on September 4th, it wasn't part of the language. It got added on September 6th after the board went through some very distinct definitions of charge and commercial negotiated rate, highlighting the differences here. The problem for the hospitals is if I'm negotiating to this, this commercial negotiated rate cap of in, in several of these instances, 2.2%, that's gonna be higher than the overall change in charge amount. And I don't want to be in violation of my orders. So if you set both of those at the same level, you can't have a gross in the net at the same percentage. It just doesn't work. So we don't want to violate our orders, which is why we are asking for a removal of that uh, overall change in charge language. I would also say if none of the materials uh, highlight uh, overall change in charge, then why is it a component of this language in the first place? Um, I look back at the fact that we've heard it here today, commercial rate was, was called a benchmark time and time and time again. Your hospital budget rule says that benchmark needs to be outlined in your uniform reporting manual. It's not there. And I think just to some of the conversations that we've had today, we need clarification in the process materials to avoid this moving forward. So I just want to highlight that for the group. I don't know how the overall change in charge language came to be if it wasn't something that was assessed or considered or part of any of the materials. Um, and that's one of the reasons we're asking for that to be removed so that we're not in violation of the orders if we negotiate to uh, a 2% commercial negotiated rate yield and it yields 3% in gross charge increases. That's the issue that we're trying to get at here. So thank you. Anything from the healthcare advocate? Good afternoon. Yeah, I'll try to be brief. Um, so the HCA, we recommend that the board deny these requests for several reasons. As we saw through the hospital budget process, the board meaningfully considered a lot of these suggested changes to the budget conditions as a part of the public process. And the board made a decision on standard budget conditions for all the hospitals. Changing conditions at this stage long after the orders have been issued and after the vote has taken place for some hospitals and not all of them, to us would set a very confusing and uneven precedent that we don't believe is in the interest of the board or, or Vermonters. We also don't think it's good practice for an independent regulator to assume a role of effectively mediating what we largely see as a contractual detail dispute between hospitals and insurers. I think the board's role of at arrest and setting the parameters uh, through the intention of the language, which I think comes through quite clearly as a cap. I think as anyone who's honest with themselves can know that you can always make language more clear on almost all cases. I know that's certainly true. Um, but the intent of the orders is very clear and it has been since the guidance was adopted and since the conditions were voted on. 
the board decided that a cap on commercial rate was necessary and prudent and changes to the rate at this stage really risks undermining the effectiveness of the process and creating a really, I think, unfair and uh, misleading precedent. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Smith. Ms. Smith. Anna Smith. All right. Um, is the board ready to vote? Is there any other information the board wants or needs? All right, well, I'll make a motion and see where we go. Um, Mark, could you pull up the slides? So we have a couple of template motion language uh, items here. First is a motion to deny. Second to our motions to approve that are um, couched in different ways, but I'll start on the first slide. Um, I'm going to make the motion on the first slide and see if there's a second. And the reason I'm moving for that is it was our intent for there to be negotiation. I don't see it as a bar to the additional revenue that the hospitals are interested in procuring, um, which I don't necessarily have a problem with so long as it's consistent with a cap. Um, so I move to deny the request to amend condition B of the fiscal year 25 budget decision orders for each of the following hospitals, Mount Scotney, Northwestern, uh, SVMC, and Springfield. I'll second. Any board discussion? Any other public comment on the motion? All in favor say aye. 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 I'll vote no. The motion carries, and I'll, I'll note that the motion carried four with, um, with one nay from member lunch. Um, I think that's all we have for today. Is there any old or new business for the board? I will move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you everyone for your participation and for the information on this issue. Uh, we appreciate that it's difficult and we really enjoyed the different perspectives as they informed us quite a bit better. So thank you for doing that. Uh, have a good day. Thanks. We are adjourned.